I have a confession to make. Stay tuned and I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> Oh my god. Hi, my name is Gaze and welcome to another Right Brain Tutorial. Sorry about that. Okay, here's my confession. I am absolutely addicted to kit bash little pieces of geometry that I purchase on ArtStation or Gumroad. The more the merrier. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with all this stuff anyway. I'm, I see some really cool little new kit bash kit uh, collection and I'm like, oh, I gotta buy that. I don't know why. However, I run into an issue with the UVs that some of these models have, uh, especially when I transfer them into Substance Painter. I like to use Substance Painter because it's a really, really cool way to deal with textures and to paint and fine-tune these objects, you know, the few times that I actually see, use them. So, um, I'll show you what I mean. Let's dive into Substance Painter first and I'll show you what the issue is and then I'll show you how to fix it. Alright, so here we are in Substance Painter. I'm just gonna start a new document. I'm gonna change the resolution to 2K and then I'm just gonna guide it to a piece of geometry that I want to bring in. In this particular case, uh, this is a set of uh, floor panel sci-fi kind of spaceshipy floor panels that I want to use. I'm just going to pick this one for now. So let me show you what the problem is. Um, in Substance Painter, what you do is like you bake these mesh maps that then smart materials uh, know how to use so they can kind of use, uh, uh, I guess, like curvature and, uh, uh, you know, different intersections and I don't know, all sorts of stuff like that. So the way you do it is just click on the bake mesh maps and I'm also going to change the output size here to 2K just to stay consistent and I'm just gonna say bake default mesh maps and when it does that it just kinda of runs automatically and it kinda of starts baking all these different maps that then it's gonna use uh, for the materials so you can kinda of start seeing a little bit what's happening right here they, they kinda of look wrong right I mean there's all sorts of craziness happening right here if I slap a smart material on it you'll see that uh, um, after it does its calculations this definitely doesn't look correct at all uh, if I split my view to do 3D and 2D, you can kind of begin seeing what the hell is happening here. And the problem starts with the UV map that um, this particular model has. And it's just kind of like this kind of crazy. I mean, it looks kind of cool, actually. But, uh, but it's not really what Substance Painter likes to deal with. I mean, obviously... There's a lot of, um, I mean, this UV maps are just all over the place. So Substance Painter is not really able to bake the correct maps so that when I apply a smart material, then it looks the way it's supposed to look. So let's go into Houdini and fix it. So here is the geometry as I had imported in Substance Painter just now. And if we look at the UVs, you'll see that they are crazy, just like what we saw in Substance Painter. So Substance Painter doesn't like this type of UV thing at all. They are like really, really huge and kind of spread out and overlapping. And they're causing all sorts of issues when I go and bake maps in Substance Painter. Um, if you guys know why this is happening, is this a Maya thing? Is this some other kind of software thing? I don't know. Like not all the models that I use have this issue, but I don't know, I mean, a lot of them do. So. so anyway, the way we're gonna fix this is by using the UV layout node. Okay, so here we are. I'm just gonna set the view here. I'm gonna zoom into here. And what we have here is a lot cleaner than before. And it's giving me a coverage of 74%, which is pretty good. I mean, I can kind of like uh, change the rotation here to uh, 180. If I do a 180, we gained a little bit better efficiency here. I can kind of even do like 90. I don't like to go like 45 degrees because it's... Um, and I don't like when uh, UVs start getting kind of angled and stuff like that. If I can, I prefer to kind of leave everything very uh, square, if you know what I mean. 82%. Okay, that's pretty good coverage. I mean, it's taking like a really, really good advantage of my UV tile. So, cool. I mean, that's all you really need to do to clean this up. So, I'm just going to go in my OBJ uh, context and I'm going to click Export, Export FBX. And I'm going to point it to my file. I'm just going to say Accept Pattern. Uh, I like to uncheck this Export in ASCII format, uh, mostly because Blender doesn't like it. But I, I don't even know if there's any advantage to it. So, anyway, I'm going to click on Export. And let's dive back into Substance Painter. So let's get rid of this guy that is a complete mess. Don't save. But remember, remember what this looks like, okay? So I'm going to create a new one. 
and it brings the guy in and you can see right off the bat I mean uh, my UV map is exactly what it looked like in Houdini which is good alright let's go to full full view so now I'm gonna go and click on the bake mat bash mat uh, <laughs> bake mesh maps <laughs> alright uh, change the resolution to 2k also and I'm just gonna click OK and now it does its thing and this immediately like just from looking at Substance Painter do its thing I can immediately tell that this is correct so click OK I mean my model already looks great because it's kinda using this um, ambient occlusion you know in my view so now if I just drag and drop my smart material on it yay I mean this looks exactly like what it should look like right I mean it's um, it's kind of matching my model it's uh, I mean it just looks you know the way I would expect it to look you know if if this had had correct UVs in the first place here let's look at like a render yeah you know it's just night and day so so yeah I mean you know this is very little work and you know it looks right so that's all I want alright let's look at another case scenario with a different model so once again substance painter click new and change my document resolution to 2k alright so here we have this other model of a kind of sci-fi canister kind of thing and um, if I look at my UVs in substance painter you can already see that this is gonna be also messy um, in this particular case they're not like exploded like in the other model so they're not like gigantic I mean they're all neatly contained into one UV square but uh, they're overlapping I mean I can just tell and go for it and doing its thing you can just kinda see once again like we're getting like really really crazy results right here and um, material as before I'm just gonna put it on here get rid of the UV and you can kinda see like I mean yeah this this looks wrong to me um, this is a mess so let's dive into Houdini and fix it so okay here we go so we got our canister in Houdini it looks nice but once again if I look at the UVs they're all over the place well I mean they're not all over the place but they're overlapping for sure so let's slap another UV layout node on it and look at that it's all cleaned nice uh, I'm just gonna check 70% rotation uh, with no rotation let's try 180 71% uh, that's a little bit better let's try 90 72 percent okay I mean it's making like a decent use of the UV grid right here okay cool let's uh, export this once more as an FBX uh, okay change the name to canister fix and leave everything as actually I'm just gonna make sure that it's pointing to the right thing okay everything looks fine export and let's dive back into substance painter close this guy don't save because it's a piece of crap and here it comes and uh, alright so now if I look at my split view with my UVs everything looks considerably better so let's see what happens when I bake my mesh maps uh, change the resolution here to 2k go for it wow, 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 wow. so I can immediately tell that something is not quite right so I can tell you right away that something is not going to look right so I'm just going to put like the smart material on it change the view 3d only so right off the bat you can see that like some stuff looks really good right like the front is it's cool but then there's a lot of other stuff here there's all this weird stretching I mean this is you know the, these guys are not even looking like they have any texture on it so I don't like this at all so that fix in Houdini did not quite get us what we wanted 
So let's dive back into Houdini. And what I would say is really happening in this particular case is that there's just bad UVs to begin with. So uh, let's get rid of the UV layout and let's go back to the original file here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna like create brand new UVs for this. So I'm gonna use once again, the uh, Side Effects Labs Auto UV, which to me is like basically one of the best tools available from Side Effects Labs. So it did this thing. Um, let's export this as an FBX. Fix, let's call it version two, leaving everything as is. This should still be pointing to my file. Uh, ooh, went away now. Ah, look at that, <laughs> first crash. No. All right, here we are after the crash. Let's try this again, export FBX into Substance Painter and see what we did. So this is the old one, I'm gonna close it, don't save this piece of crap. Do a new one, uh, 2K resolution, and let's use Canister Fix version two that we just created. I'm gonna click OK. So the most important thing is, cause you know, the other UVs didn't look bad in here, right? I mean, but it gave us like some really weird results. So the most important thing is let's see how Substance Painter can bake the maps and if they look good. So I'm gonna click bake mesh maps. Ugh. Bake mesh maps. Man, this is a tongue twister. Yeah, I think this is gonna work. Maybe, we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out in a second. Okay, did its thing. Let's slap the machinery on it. Smart material. Okay, I, I can live with this. I mean, this is this is looking a lot, a lot better. There's still some weirdness, but I, I think I can live with it for right now. We're not done yet. Sorry, guys. We gotta fix it. We gotta fix it or else I'm not gonna be able to, you know, sleep tonight. <laughs> All right, let's go back into Houdini. So this is where we left off. I mean, we used the Side Effects Labs Auto UVs and it did a good job for everything except for that section. Something about the Auto UV algorithm is not really giving us what we want. So let's try the other method. I don't know if you guys watched uh, the my UV tutorial that I published uh, last week. If you haven't, you should check it out because it can help fix things like this. So let's get rid of the uh, side effects labs auto UVs. We go back to the screwed up UVs that came with the file. So we're going to use the other method, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to type auto, but instead of auto UVs, we're going to use the UV auto seams. So now what we're going to ask Houdini to do is to automatically look at our model and find places that it makes sense to cut up the mesh so that it can be laid out flat on our UV um, square. So, but that's only half of it. This has just created the seams. So now we need to use a UV flatten node. And a UV flatten node by itself does whatever it tries to do, which is not great. But instead, we're going to say that we're going to use as flattening constraints the seams group that was created automatically. So this uh, does most of it except now they're overlapping so that's not quite good enough right so now we need to kind of spread them apart so that they're not overlapping on top of each other and we do that by um, going to the layout constraints and also pointing it to the seams that were created and now that it did that uh, everything is looking you know nice and neat and it's not overlapping onto each other so let's export this FBX and see what happens in Substance Painter so so once again, remember this portion right here that looks really, really screwed up in using the Side Effects Labs Auto UVs. So we're gonna close this, I don't need to save it. I'm gonna new, change this to 2K like before, and now I'm gonna select my version four. So maybe fourth time is the charm. I'm gonna click OK, and I'm gonna say bake mesh maps, 2K, Go for it and let it do its thing. So it looks good, but we're not gonna know until we actually apply our smart material and see if it actually fixed the problem. So let's find out. Are you ready? Drum roll. 
find a smart material and it looks good I think we fixed it I mean it looks good on this side and it looks good on the other side too I mean it looks good at the bottom it looks good at the top I mean I would say this is perfect I mean this is you know this is great I mean how's that woo let me go back out how's the backside looking backside was looking good yeah I mean we're done that's it I mean you know like if you remember this section was looking really really screwy before and now it looks good so what can I say side effects labs auto UVs works a lot of times but not always and sometimes we have to use a different method in order to get the UVs that we need for substance painter all right, that's all I got for you guys today. By the way, if you guys know why some of these models that I'm seeing come in with like these really, really crazy large UVs that are not neatly packed into the regular UV tile, I mean, let me know, because I'm kind of curious. Or if you know if there's a better way of tackling it and fixing those kind of stretched out maps right into Substance Painter so that I don't have to go into uh, Houdini to fix the FPX files, let me know that in the comments below. because. I'm always curious. So that's it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.